Let's move on to the next part, as you said, Crystal, about uh, the fate of the Ukraine bill. Now, the pressure that is currently coming down on Speaker Mike Johnson is immense from all sides, including, though, by the way, on the Democrats who are nearly unanimous uh, in wanting to pa uh, pass this combined bill for aid to Ukraine and to Israel. To give you a taste of what some of the criticism looks like, from the Biden administration's favorite TV mm. show, Morning Joe, this is the new line, is that you are uh, the friend of Putin and an enemy of democracy, an enemy of freedom across the globe. Let's take a listen. Where you have Republicans parroting Vladimir Putin, you have the Republican nominee, likely nominee, saying, yes, Putin, invade Europe. Russia, invade Europe. You have all of these things happening at the same time. Uh, and it's it's not an accident. And and, and I've got to say, even I am shocked that, that, that Republicans on the Hill haven't stood up to Donald Trump uh, saying that, that Russia should invade NATO allies. But they haven't, which means, again, this is a moment in time everybody has to stop and recognize that not only is American democracy on the line, but freedom across the globe on the line. Donald Trump is siding with Xi Donald Trump is siding with Putin. Donald Trump is siding with Kim Jong-un. These are the people that he wants to make alliances with, and he wants to turn his back on a free Europe. Turning our back on a free Europe enemy. I need a brain lobotomy after listening to something like that. But the crazy thing is, is that this is not just, you, you know, it's one thing if it's on Morning Joe. This is what Biden himself is saying. He's like, you are an enemy of freedom across the globe. You are a Putin puppet if you refuse to pass this. That's basically what Biden had to say, too, whenever he urged the passage of this bill very shortly after the Morning Joe segment. Let's take a listen. By a margin of 70 to 29 to move forward with the bipartisan national security bill. Now, now it moves to the House. And I urge Speaker Johnson to bring it to the floor immediately, immediately. There's no question that if the Senate bill was put on the floor in the House of Representatives, it would pass. It would pass. And the Speaker knows that. So I call on the Speaker to let the full House speak its mind and not allow a minority of most extreme voices in the House to block this bill even from being voted on, even from being voted on. This is a critical act for the House to move. It needs to move. The bill provides urgent funding for Ukraine so it can keep defending itself against Putin's vicious vicious onslaught. Putin's vicious, vicious onslaught. So this is what the line is now, Crystal. And uh, it does seem, though, that uh, Jeffries, the House uh, major high House Minority Leader, mm -hmm. is taking up these words. Uh, let's put this up there on the screen. Jeffries, basically, the only thing they have at their disposal is the ability to try and hijack a tool called a discharge petition. A discharge petition effectively allows circumvention of the House Speaker and of the Rules Committee to bring a piece of legislation to the floor Fam most famously used in the case of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Well, I thought you were going to say in Legally Blonde. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I, I apologize. <laughs> uh, I'm not familiar, actually. Uh, is that Legally Blonde 1? Are you sure? I think you, I think you might be referring to Legally Blonde 2, uh, which uh, has been panned by the critics. I am a great fan of uh, Legally Blonde 1. Uh, but as we see here, uh, the, House, the House Minority Leader, the Democrats, are trying and preparing to be able to use this tool. However, Crystal, people I spoke to who are very, very anti-Ukraine aid and yeah. who are working on Capitol Hill, intimately involved in this, uh, they are not worried about. Uh, the discharge petition. So I'm not mm. sure what you think. I'm a little uh, worried. It, uh, it's possible. I'm not saying they would definitely not use everything at their disposal to bring it about. Yeah. It's just that procedurally, at a minimum, this takes 42 days to be able to get it there. And it would require a very decent amount of Republicans to buck the House Speaker and to openly put themselves up for target by the Republican base, by Donald Trump and others who are urging not to pass this bill. So I'm curious uh, what you think as well. I mean, I, I hope that analysis is yeah. correct. I'm really betting on Washington to dysfunction on this one. I'm yes. delighted that they scuttled the border plus Ukraine plus Israel version of this bill, and I am hoping that this one also fails. But uh, this is some very potent Kool-Aid that they are selling here in this town. I mean, think about the fact that in the Senate, you had at least Chris Van Hollen and Elizabeth Warren 
they have openly acknowledged Israel is committing war crimes, mm -hmm. and yet they still voted for billions more to Israel because of Ukraine, mm -hmm. because they feel so strongly about the fate of democracy around the world that you have to, you know, rush more money into what is now a failed and losing cause and is subjecting uh, not us, but the Ukrainian people to, you know, endless misery with no end in sight. That's supposedly what this money is uh, supposed to go to is, you know, the fate of democracy around the world when in reality, the fact that we have pursued this course in Ukraine has been an utter disaster for um, the Ukrainian people first and foremost. So that is why, because there is such a commitment to this issue that almost defies any sort of logic. It really is almost like a religious devotion at this point oh, it is that I can't help but be concerned that they are going to find some way through because, you know, when it's healthcare money or money to like feed kids or like, you know, homeless people or whatever, then oh, there's a million obstacles, we can never get it through, et cetera. But it seems like when it's money for war, somehow they always freaking find a way. On the discharge petition piece, um, the way that this works, you have to get a majority of the House to sign on to the discharge mm -hmm. petition. So you would need basically all of the Democrats. I do think there are some Democrats who would not sign on, um, you know, squad members and other lefty type Democrats who wouldn't sign on because of Israel. Um, and then, but, you know, then you have to cobble together some Republicans. Are there some Republicans that are committed enough to Ukraine to buck whatever Donald Trump wants and sign on to this? I'm not confident that there aren't. The other thing that I was reading about, and I don't really understand this, guys, but allegedly mm. there is some other discharge petition that got started <laughs> on some other issue that already has 236 signatures that they could use as a starting point and then just have to add to that to get to a majority. And then they could swap out what it was originally supposed to be for and make it about this, which puts them a lot closer to accomplishing their goal than they would be if they have to start from scratch. Again, I the legislative mechanics are not my specialty. This is just what I read from some political analyst that said that this option was on the table as well. Like I said, Sagar, that's why I can't really rest easy believing that this is completely dead on arrival because they always seem to find a way to fund these freaking wars when it comes down to it. I will not rest easy uh, up and um, we need several more weeks uh, before I'd be officially, I think this thing would be dead. Let's put this up there on the screen uh, just to give an idea though of why things are pretty tied up right now. So uh, this is from Jake Sherman um, over at Punchbowl. They say, Johnson has effectively said the bill is dead. The House is in this week, but it is out next and then has three days in session to deal with government funding, which comes due on March 1st. Meanwhile, most Republicans are opposed to Ukraine funding. They are stuck on attaching H.R. 2, which does not have a prayer of passing. H.R. 2, by the way, is a border legislation. Discharge petition is also an option, but there are a lot of hurdles there. Some that Dems will dash because of Israel funding. So some R's will be afraid to put their neck that is on the line. So I think that's a pretty good analysis. As you said, I wouldn't put it past them. I don't put anything past these people. They'll yeah, it, Johnson's also not really reliable here. The either. problem with Johnson is not even his reliability, Crystal. It's that he is weak and he does not have a total control of the caucus. A lot of Republicans right now are very pissed off at him because for allowing the expulsion of George Santos, the original failure of the Mayorkas mm -hmm. vote, uh, the fact that the Israel bill was put up and then it was failed, that he then gaveled in a failing vote before the House of Representatives. I know this all sounds like inside baseball, guys, but the reason it matters is because when you're weak and you don't have institutional control and you lose control of the floor and all of that, it opens the door for exactly you said, you know, chaos loves a vacuum. And with that vacuum, you, the Democrats or uh, pro-Ukraine Republicans or Russian space laser psyops and all of that could could create a situation where they would pass something like this. Let's also not forget about the influence of the Israel lobby here in yeah, this town. True. I mean, that's why the right. vote was so overwhelming in the Senate. Um, I saw, you know, the people who were in favor of this bill were urging APAC and these other uh, associated groups to apply as much pressure as possible yeah. to try to get this bill through one way or another. And so, um, yeah, I think, you know, I'm, I'm hoping it's dead. The fact that people who want it to fail aren't nervous about its prospects and think that it is, in fact, dead, that's a good sign. But you have a lot of very powerful constituencies and very powerful ideologies that exist in this town, which are used to getting their way, that want to see this aid go through. And so, you know, I, I don't think that we can completely count it out at this point because of that, you know, array of powerful interests and interests with a lot of money, too. I mean, don't forget that APAC 
funds huge amounts into these congressional campaigns. And, um, you know, a lot of these members are not going to want to get crosswise mm. of APAC in the upcoming uh, election season. Are you saying it's all about the Benjamins? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I yes. am. You can say whatever the hell you want to say about that, but that's just reality in this town. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.